everyone. Welcome to Foresights with me Anjali. You're watching the top news for the day. Hundreds of Indian students took to roads in Canada to protest as they claim innocence over fake offer letters to gain admission into Canadian universities and colleges. They received the deportation notices over the fake letters. Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada, statement offering support and that they were deeply aware of the situation of international students comes as a huge relief. As many as 700 Indian students have received deportation letters from the Canadian Border Services Agency after their admission of letters to educational institutions were found to be fake. The students began to protest and they say they are innocent and have been scammed. According to them, 700 is an estimate. The real number of affected students is higher as many are suffering in silence and not coming forward. They appeal to authorities informing them that they have put their lives, savings to come to Canada and now we have been asked to go back. India's External Affairs Minister S. Jaishankar assured the students that the Ministry of External Affairs and the High Commission are working to address the issue. He informed that the Canadians accept that it would be unfair if the student has done no wrong. They accept the idea that they have to find a solution to it. I feel the Canadian system is fair in that regard, he said. His statement comes after Punjab's NRI Affairs Minister Kuldeep Singh Daliwal's appeal to the Centre for Intervention. The issue was brought up in the Canadian Parliament and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said that they were deeply aware of the situation of international students. Our focus is on identifying the culprits, not penalising the victims. Victims of this fraud will have an opportunity to demonstrate and present evidence for their case. We recognize the immense contributions that the international students bring to our country, he mentioned. It's been a month and Manipur continues to be under the spell of violence. The protests continue and they include the cookie community, women who reached New Delhi, seeking Home Minister Amit Shah's intervention in bringing peace. Meanwhile, demand to lift internet ban gains steam. Over a month of violence, of internet ban of ethnic clashes, of extremist groups resorting to killings and shootings, Manipur's strife is refusing to die down. As more and more BSF forces descend in the state to control the militant groups attacking each other, the attack on Sugnu village and torching of ambulance killing a woman and her injured son indicate that the violence is refusing to die down. That said, there are no fresh reports of violence and the security forces are carrying out the combing operations and seizing arms and ammunition. More and more people are leaving Manipur, many of them reaching New Delhi for safety. However, security is the focus now followed by bringing back the displaced Manipuris, informs the authorities. There has been a complete shutdown of internet in Manipur for the last one month and this was done to quell rumours as per the officials. However, the lawyers and business people of Manipur are reaching out to court to get the ban lifted. They say it's affecting their business and banning internet was against the television rules of 2017. In Mumbai, a 56-year-old man was arrested over allegedly killing his live-in partner and chopped her body into pieces. It was a gruesome murder that took place in Mumbai's Mira Road area. A 56-year-old man, Manoj Sahani, has allegedly killed his living partner, Saraswati Vaidya, and chopped the body into pieces. The police were notified by the neighbours who detected foul smell. According to the police, the murder must have taken place three days ago and they did not find some of the body parts which they believe have already been disposed. They found a few parts boiled in a pressure cooker and kept in plastic bags. Hyderabad is going to be home to the largest hospital complex in India. Telangana state government is fast moving in the direction and is soon calling for tenders to construct the biggest medical facility as an extension to the prestigious Nizam's Institute of Medical Sciences. Government of Telangana has announced a few months ago that it is planning to set up five super speciality hospitals in Hyderabad. It was also announced that the NIMS will be upgrades and extended into a 3,490-bed hospital. Nizam's Institute of Medical Sciences currently has 1,490 beds. The expanded hospital will be built on 25 lakh square feet area. The hospital will have the best of facilities at par with any private hospital but will be providing medical services to the poor as well. The now defunct government quarters have been brought down to facilitate the extension. It is being learned that Chief Minister of Telangana K. Chandrasekhar Rao will be launching the project on June 14th. The southwest monsoon has set in over Kerala on June 8th. The meteorologist earlier said 
cyclone vapor joy had been impacting the intensity of the monsoon and that its onset over Kerala would be mild. This has also been the reason for the delay. The monsoon took an extra one week as entered many parts of Kerala and has advanced into remaining parts of South Arabian Sea and some parts of Central Arabian Sea, entire Lakshadweep area, most parts of South Tamil Nadu, remaining parts of Comorin area, Gulf of Mannar and some more parts of Southwest, Central and Northeast Bay of Bengal. Cyclone Vipar Joy, the first storm breathing in the Arabian Sea this year, centered about 860 km west, southwest of Goa, is expected to intensify further in the next 48 hours. Cyclone Vipar Joy is likely to affect the coastlines of Goa, Maharashtra and Karnataka. Gujarat is also ready to tackle the cyclone just in case it comes under its spell. Fishermen are advised not to venture into such cyclone hit areas in the Arabian Sea and those who are out at sea are advised to return to the coast. Thank you for watching Foresights with me Anjali. See you all again with latest updates.